Hey everybody, it's Charlie at Charlie Slybox, and as part of our Ask Charlie series, uh, one of the questions that we've gotten a whole bunch of times from a whole bunch of people, um, and honestly I've gotten it a million times over, over the course of the last 10 years anyway, um, is to explain a little bit more about biots and uh, how they work and uh, um, all the things that you can do with them and how you might go about uh, making bodies. Um, and those are all great valid questions because there's some very little detail stuff that uh, um, you maybe notice the fly comes out slightly different every now and again, and you can't quite figure out why. I'll try to show you why that is. Um, one of the one of the questions I get all the time is obviously Prince nymph tails. And uh, back in the day when I tied commercially, I tied billions and billions and billions of beadhead Prince nymphs, and I hate the damn things. But I'm really really good at biot tails, so um, I'll show you how to do biot tails as well. Um, so we'll start off by just talking about what a biot is. Um, and what I've got here is a, this is a turkey feather, um, but what a biot is, is the leading edge of the flight feather. So this is a wing feather, um, and the biot is on the front side of that feather. It's not this long side here on this side, it's the short side um, over here. Um, and turkey biots, as opposed to goose biots, are, are longer and softer than goose biots. Um, so there's, there's good applications for both, and there's applications where you kind of have to use one or the other. Um, turkey biots being long are going to be the, the feather of choice for bigger flies. Um, if you've got to cover a long length of hook shank, you're going to really need a turkey biot to do that. Um, a goose biot has got um, just great uh, variegation and segmentation to it, um, on it, but limited to smaller hooks because they're much shorter feathers. So um, that's just kind of the, the short answer to what the difference between the two is. Um, what I've got here in my hand is a wild turkey biot that's been dyed, a wild turkey wing quill that's been dyed yellow. Um, this one here is a domestic turkey, which started off white and has now been dyed orange. Um, so when there's no modeling on there, that's from a domestic turkey. Still nice long biots, just not going to have the modeling that a wild turkey biot would have, which can be good or bad, just depends on what you're looking for. Um, so that to explain what a biot is, um, is a pretty easy way to go about it. It's the leading edge of the flight feather on a goose or a turkey. Um, and most other birds have them too. I think all of the birds probably have them. It's the lifting edge. It's the part that gets the bird off the ground when he needs to fly. Um, so that is where those biots come from. Um, now, to kind of jump right into it and talk about biot tails, um, like I say, tying a million print stamps, I've come up with a pretty, pretty smooth, easy way to tie biot tails. Um, and I'm going to walk you through it. Um, but first, I'm going to start with um, how to prep a stick of biots. When you buy a package of biots, um, these are stripped goose biots. Um, which is typically what you'll use for a tail on a, on a stonefly nymph or a prince nymph, something like that. Um, and what stripped means is that that leading edge, that front edge of the feather, has been cut off that quill and packaged up into a, a stripped piece like this. Um, so this is still a biot and it's still the front edge of the feather, it just doesn't have the other side still attached to it. Um, and to tie a, a prince nymph tail, what I want to do first, first of all, um, or a biot tail I should say, I don't have to specify that as a prince nymph, is I'm going to start my thread and make a nice even thread base all the way back to the bend, um, right where I want my tail to be mounted. Um, I'm going to switch to my good glasses so that I can see what I'm doing, make this look like I know what I'm doing. Um, and I'm going to come in and I'm going to prep my biot. So when I have a brand new stick of biots here, and in the in the case of the tails, I don't it doesn't I'm not really worried too much about uh, uh, whether this comes from a left or a right, but we'll get into that for the body feathers that we're that we're going to wrap. Um, if you look at the base of the feather, um, the biots down here are pretty wide, so they lend themselves well to bigger flies. Um, from about midpoint up, up to the tip, these biots become a little narrower, um, which are more, more sized proportionally to the, the typical range of your trout flies. Um, I'll save the stuff at the tip for the smallest size stuff, um, and from the, from the middle up, kind of for, for all the other sizes. So what I like to do is I'll just take that biot, that stick, and just break it in half, like so. So I've got just kind of from the middle up. And then the next thing I'll do is I'm going to take and just kind of run my fingers against the grain. If I pick up some of those biots and run my fingers against the grain of those biots to get them to stand up away from the quill. Um, it just makes them easier to grab like that. Now you've got to be careful when you do that. They cut that front edge off and this, this strip that was attached to the quill is very thin and can be very sharp. So you've got to be careful when you do that. I still have a big groove in my thumb from I don't even know how many years ago when I did it, um, but I actually cut my thumb right down to the bone with the, the stick of a biot. So be careful when you do it, just kind of get up on the biots and stand those up. 
Um, right there is enough for a couple dozen flies probably, so two per fly, however many that worked out to be. Um, but what I want to do, now that I'm, I've got my thread where I want it, um, to, to set up for these tails, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the first two biots off the bottom and just peel them off. I don't cut them. I'm going to just peel them off. And what I've got here are two biots that are curving the same direction. In this case, I'm holding them, they're curving down. Um, and what I want to do is oppose them so that they curve away from each other. Um, so rather than try to fumble around with the biots, what I'll do is I'm just going to turn my hand over and I'll grab the near biot and then I'll turn my hand back over and put it right back on top. So now these are curved away from each other. From that point, I'm just going to slide my fingertips back and forth until I get those tips just about as even as I can get them. So they're the same length. So now I've got my tails set up so that they're the same length and they're opposed and curving away from each other. Once I've done that, I can come in for my measurement, and with this, I've got a size 10 uh, TMCO 100 in my vise here, so it's, it, this is just a demo hook. Um, the, the length of this tail is not going to make any big, huge difference. I'm going to say, let's say that's three quarters of a hook shank. Um, and really, whatever length you want, as long as that's what you planned on. Uh, so I'm going to take these two, two biots, I'm going to measure them, then I'm going to butt my fingers together. So I'm holding these in my material hand, and I'm going to bring these two biots in from the back of the hook so that I'm splitting the hook. Um, with the two biots. So the hook is down the center and the two biots are on either side. Now if I just tie these in right here, if I hold them square and tie them in, my thread torque is going to twist them about a quarter turn. Um, and that is what you fight with all the time when you're doing a biot tail. We've all done it, we've all been there. Um, it only took me about 10 million uh, Prince nymphs to figure this out, but I finally, it finally occurred to me that if I tilt these back toward me a bit when I tie them in and allow that thread torque to twist them into the straight position rather than out from straight to twisted the far to the far side, um, this would go a lot more easily. And sure enough, that's true. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to square these up on the hook, and then I'm going to tilt them just slightly toward me, about a quarter turn. And I'm just going to take a single turn of thread around. Now when I do this, I'm not really pulling on the thread. I've just tightened the thread down. It's just taut. Um, and usually I let this sort of ne next step happen in my fingers. But I'm going to take my fingers away and show you. As I tighten the thread, watch, I'm not going to move the bobbin. I'm just going to tighten the thread and let it roll the biots to top dead center on the hook. Once I've got them there, then I can come forward over the butt ends and anchor those in place, like so. So we've got those divided on either side with a nice smooth even tail. Um, that's the best method I've seen to do it. It's the quickest and easiest. Um, I see a lot of tires make a little ball of dubbing or tie one biot in at a time. Um, I, it takes a lot longer than it should. It's a lot more uh, m more work and more steps than you, is really necessary. Um, so just to show that one more time here real quick, um, just as a point also, if you tie in a set of biots and you don't like where it went, um, you've got to kind of move your tie-in point because you made a notch there. Um, so I'm just going to back that up a bit tighten that thread and square those up on the hook, and then only come forward from that first turn. If I come back over those, you can see my thread torque will start to push on the tails again. So I don't want to go back over that first turn, I only want to go forward from there. And that's how you get a nice split forked tail for a Prince Nymph or Stonefly Nymph. Um, so with that, that's the best tip I'll give you today. Maybe it's not, maybe there's more better tips coming. We don't know, we'll see. Um, so to get into wrapping a biot for a body, um, let's talk about the, the, the structure of a biot. So if I grab a biot here off of this feather, um, and this is a turkey biot, and this is from a left wing. Um, so the way I can tell this is a left wing is this is the front edge. The short edge of the biot is the front edge of the wing. So if you just imagine that being on the front edge, it would have to be on the left side. That's where that would have to be. Um, so this is a left wing feather, and I tie left-handed. Um, so what I like about this feather, or what I would do with this feather, um, because it's got a natural curve to it. You can see there's an inside curve here, a concave side and a convex side. Um, I always want to wrap the biot with its natural curve. Um, so in, in the case of this feather, with the natural curve, the way this is set up with the left hand tying and a left handed biot, um, is I'm going to end up with a ribbed body that's going to telescope very nicely up the hook. Um, so just to start there, I'm going to take this biot and I'm going to tie it in by its tip end. Um, now, when you tie a biot in to make a body, you, you tend to think it's going to be very short and you're going to run out of feather, so you try to tie it in by the very, very tip. And if you've done that before, you know that thing's going to break off on your first turn. Um, so you have to just sort of to go for it and, and leave a little bit more uh, area up here to tie in. So don't tie in by the very tip. Tie in a little bit further back from there. And I'm going to make just a nice smooth thread base as I come forward over that. 
so what I've got here is the notch of the biot that everybody talks about is on the top side and the stand-up edge is on the bottom. So as I wrap this, when I fold this feather to wrap, that stand-up edge is going to be on the back side. Um, now I like to use hackle pliers and these are Jorgensen hackle tweezers. Um, that's the best thing i found for wrapping biots. That makes a huge difference. These really grab nicely on these little flat feathers. I'm going to grab it right by the butt end and I'm going to start to wrap this feather. And You can see from the first turn that that stand-up edge is on the back side of that turn. Um, and as much uh, explanation as I'm about to do here, um, really there's only a few options. You know, if you're in question, take a biot and tie it to the hook and make a turn. Um, that'll very quickly explain to you which direction it's going. Um, so this is with its natural curve, and that stand-up edge is following. It's on the back side of the turn. So as I wrap this feather forward, you can see I've got a very smoothly telescoping body that overlaps nicely and everything kind of slanted back toward the bend. And then I can tie that off with a couple of turns and clip that butt end out. And then I'll just smooth that off. Now, uh, the other option would be to use a biot from the right wing. So if I take a biot from the right wing and I tie it in to wrap if I wrap it with its natural curve, it's going to come out smooth, which honestly turkey biots are not very good at, and I'll show you that as well. Um, so I'm going to wrap this one with its natural curve, but you're going to see that it's going to come out with a very different, I'm sorry, against its natural curve. It's going to come out with a very different profile of how that stand-up edge stands as I wrap it. Um, so it, again, it was notch up, dark side down, but now I'm wrapping it against its natural curve. And if you look at the end of the feather, you can see there's a cup to the feather. Um, it sort of is C-shaped. Um, so I've got the, the inside of the C toward me in this case, and that's going to buckle the feather and make this rib lie completely differently on the hook. So as I wrap this feather coming forward, you can see I get a much taller stand-up rib, much more pronounced, and it doesn't feed quite as smoothly. Um, subtle differences, maybe not a huge difference, but it you know, what I always say about fly tying is anything's okay as long as that's what you intended and you know what was happening to get it that way. Um, that makes it repeatable. So that's the difference there between wrapping a, a left-handed biot with its curve and a right-handed biot against its curve. Both give you a nice ribbed body, but one is more pronounced, one is a little bit more subtle. So that's the difference there. I'm going to whip finish this and we'll throw another hook in the vise. to show you what this looks like if you wrap a turkey biot with the trying to get a smooth body, which really is what a goose biot is best for. So I'm going to take and start my thread again and just make a thread base back here to the bend. And I'm going to pick a right wing, in my case tying left-handed, a right wing goose biot. And I'm going to tie it in with the inside of that C curve toward the hook. Like so. So my notch would be down, my stand-up edge is on top. Now I'll grab this in my hackle pliers, and you'll see as I begin to wrap this, that stand-up edge is on the front side of that turn, that I can overlap the back side of the turn to cover. So I can start to make a smooth body. And the, for the first few turns of these, they come out beautiful. They look really good. But as you get further up, you start to lose that segmentation, and it just sort of all muddies up and you don't have quite the segmentation that you intended. So that's why I don't like turkey biots for smooth bodies. They just don't make quite the same uh, same level of, of uh, class on the finished fly that a goose biot would there. Um, so if I took that feather, or took that biot from the right wing, and wrapped it against its curve, that's what I just showed you on that last hook, if I took a left-handed feather, left-handed, left-winged, left-winged feather, I'd end up with the same kind of thing, just going against its curve here. And again, it just doesn't wrap quite the same way. So typically what I'll go for is if I'm going to tie a bigger fly, I'll use a turkey biot to make the body and I'll make it with a ribbed body. Um, I obviously try to use the, the corresponding side, so in my left-handed case, I'd use a left-handed feather. If you tie right-handed, you should use a right-handed feather. Um, if you've got a left-handed buddy, you all have a left-handed buddy, um, you can send those feathers to him because he'll use them up. Um, 
not much use to you. It's not to say that you can't use them. Your flies just won't come out as pretty, and you'll probably catch 18 to 22 percent less, less fish, so you've got a built-in excuse. Um, so that's the two differences between the, the with the curve and against the curve um, on a turkey biot. So smooth and ribbed with and against the curve. Um, same goes for goose biots, and where goose biots really lend themselves well is for smaller flies where you've got um, the opportunity to use a shorter feather but still create a really nicely segmented body. Um, you know, for stand-up rib, um, goose biot will work just fine. Turkey biot has a little bit more pronounced stand-up rib. Um, where goose biots really shine, I think, is for a smooth body, bodied application. Um, so in my case, tying left-handed, I want a right quill. And the way to tell is if you look at the very base of the feather, you can kind of tell from the outside of the feather. You have to think about how it would be attached to the quill. There's that same kind of concave curve. They'll sweep down and away. So this is the outside here. This is the inside. Um, this would sit on the feather like so. So this would be a left-handed wing quill. Okay, And you have to maybe go, go, go at it a couple different times to kind of figure out what it is you're after there. Um, in my case, tying a smooth body, I like, I like the left quill. And I'm going to take a biot, and that'll tie in notch down. I'll tie it in by its tip with the notch down and the stand-up edge on top. Now, as I wrap this, what's going to happen is I'm going to have that stand-up edge leading the way, and I can cover it with the back edge of the smooth side. So I get a really nicely segmented, very pretty body. Um, and you can see it also builds somewhat of a taper in there just from the natural overlap of the feather. But it's pretty short. Size 16 is about as big as you can typically get out of goose biots. Um, if you have a greater Canada goose feather, you know, natural uh, wild Canada goose feather, um, from a greater bird, those feathers get just a little bit bigger. You can get a sneak in a size 14 maybe, but that's really about the limit to it. Anything bigger than that, um, or if you get a fly that's got a fatter body than that, you're going to need to use a turkey biot. Um, so that's a left-handed feather wrapped with its natural curve, smooth side out. And you can see the what that body looks like, just really nicely segmented, very pretty. Now the difference is if I used a right-handed quill and I wrap a smooth body, the difference that I'm going to get there is I'm going to have to wrap the feather against its natural curve. And it's not that it won't still come out smooth. Um, it's just not going to come out quite as nicely tapered and as evenly wrapped as it would if I wrapped it with its natural curve. And I know these are little details, but that's why you're all here. Um, fly tying is all about little details, and this is one of my little pet peeves. So if I wrap this feather against its natural curve, I still have the stand-up edge on the front side, but you can see that feather wants to buckle. The inside of the fiber is a little bit different color than the, than the, hook, the feather we've wrapped on the back of the hook here. I still get a ribbed effect to it, but it doesn't lay down as nicely as the biot wrapped on the back of the hook. And we'll show that up close here and give you a good good detail of, of exactly what that looks like. So with its natural curve here at the back of the hook and against its natural curve at the front. Um, very subtle, but this plainly looks better. Um, it's those little details, little pieces like that are what make the big difference. Um, I'm going to whip finish this real quick and I'll show you the, the converse of this, which will be wrapping each of those feathers with the stand-up rib out. Um, and a goose biot does make a nice little stand-up edge. I mean, back in the back in the day, we used to tie biot midges that were it was just a goose biot wrapped up a hook with a little dubbed head. Um, and on small hooks, that's that's totally adequate. Um, on bigger hooks, just not quite enough length. Um, so if I take this left-handed quill and tie this in. at the bend of the hook here and wrap this forward my stand-up edge is going to be on the back side and I can really overlap these tightly but that stand-up edge is not near as tall as it was on the turkey biots that we used earlier tie that off and you can see that's kind of a clunky tie off just because these feathers are a little little thicker um, one little tip for these, if you've got dyed biots particularly, natural biots, not such a, not such a worry. Um, but with dyed biots, sometimes if you soak the feather in water first, um, or I'll tell you an old commercial trick is I just take a chunk of biots and stick them in my mouth. Um, can't really do that during the video because I got to talk, but um, that's another way to do it. So if I take a biot from the other wing and tie this in 
for the stand-up edge. So I'm going to wrap this against its natural curve. And I wrap this by out forward. Same deal as the turkey. Whole different angle, much more upright, uh, 90 degrees to the stem rather than a slight angle back. Um, again, very subtle, but that's the difference between the two. Um, and I, in my eyes, that makes a huge difference. I think the back end of that looks much better than the front end of that. Um, so you have to kind of pay attention to which direction you're wrapping the buyout and if you're wrapping it with its natural curve or not. Um, ideally, you're always wrapping the buyout with its natural curve. Um, so you'll need a feather from one wing to wrap with the natural curve for a ribbed body, and you'll need a feather from the other wing to wrap a smooth body with the natural curve. And that's the difference there. Um, if I can think to repeat that sentence, I'll try to say it again because that's going to be important. Um, so if you're going to wrap a smooth body, you need a feather wrapped with the natural curve from one wing. And for a, a, a ribbed body, you need a feather wrapped with the natural curve from the other wing. And whatever hand you tie with will determine which side that's going to happen with. Um, and as confusing as all this sounds, um, I will tell you to sit down and just get some buyouts out and tie with them. Just wrap them around a hook and see what they do. You'll see the difference. When you see it, um, wrapping with the natural curve is much more easily done. Uh, they feed up the hook better, they lay more nicely, and you can see there's actually a taper built in there. Um, where wrapped against the natural curve, there's not near the taper that was in there. Um, so that's the little details on buyouts. And, and, you know, I'm as nitpicky as anybody gets in the world, but that's one thing that I think really sets flies aside is the little detail stuff like that. So um, I hope you like that. We've got more, uh, more Ask Charlie time. So Max is always asking me to get more questions. Um, so you guys got to help me out here. Send me some more questions and we'll try to answer them. I hope that helped. Um, if you got questions or you got something else you want to see, put it in the comments below or send us a message at Ask Charlie at Charlie's Flybox. Um, and we'll, we'll do our best to get them answered. Thanks for watching, guys. I'm Charlie at Charlie's Flybox.